Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, today I'm going to be answering another gun related question for you. All right, this is a doozy. All right, there's a lot to unpack. This one's called Do Bullets Fly Straight? Hmm, do they? Well, there's a lot to go over, and there's a lot of things to talk about. I'm going to try to give you the penny tour and give you a really direct answer on this one. I don't want this video to be super long, but I am going to break this down a bit. Uh, before we get started, I would like to thank our friends at Sonoran Desert Institute for supporting our videos. Uh, if you want a career in gunsmithing, anything in the firearms industry, they are definitely your go-to people. Great distance learning programs, wonderful instructors, great financial incentives. SDI is such a great group of people, and they will give you the education that you need and get you on your path to success. So check them out, Sonoran Desert Institute, SDI, and tell them that uh, we sent you over there. And uh, big thanks to them for supporting the channel. Okay, well, the short answer is uh, no. <laughs> Bullets definitely do not fly straight, okay? Uh, whenever you fire a uh, bullet out of any gun, no matter what it is, it is on a journey to the ground immediately, okay? Gravity takes over. Look, gravity's a thing, okay? <laughs> gravity's quite the force, okay? And as much as we want to pretend that projectiles fly straight like a laser beam, uh, they certainly do not. I'm sure I have some footage floating around somewhere that Chad is probably going to find uh, of a lot of our long range shooting. You can totally see this phenomenon happening in our videos. You'll see the projectile rise and arc and fall into the target. Okay. So basically, if you want to pretend, so to speak, if you've got a straight line like this piece of paper, let's say that that's the optic. Okay. A straight line. All right. I'm looking through my optic and I'm looking in a straight line to my target right? When you zero the gun, you're going to zero it for a certain uh, distance. Some people might do a 25-yard zero, a 50-yard zero, a 100-yard zero, right? What you're essentially doing, the, proje the projectile is going to rise up to the, uh, above the bore height to the scope height. There's always an offset, right? Your optic is a couple of inches, sometimes more or less, over the actual bore, okay? The projectile is going to come out of the, uh, of the barrel. It's going to rise, it's going to meet where your eye's looking. It's going to rise above where your eye's looking. And then it's going to come back down into your line of sight. Okay? So like old timers that, that say, well, I'm going to zero my 30-06 200 uh, yards, right? So that 100 yards, I'm only, you know, two and a half inches high. And at 300 yards, I'm only an inch or two low. And you're in the boiler room. That is old wisdom for these guys understanding bullet trajectory and knowing what type of trajectory. Uh, so what they're essentially doing is establishing like sort of a, a, a max ordinance for that p particular projectile for the intended ranges that they plan to be shooting. OK, not every projectile you can you can do that with. Right. It depends. Like that's why when you're at a military range and you're shooting your M16, for those of you that have been in the military. Right. You do the little 25 yard zero and then you click the little thing over to the 300 yard setting and you shoot fast Freddy that's 50 yards in front of you and the projectile, you know, unless, <laughs> unless you're <laughs> aiming, you know, really low. You know, th those projectiles will just they hit the berm. It's, it's really weird. Right. There's this. But at 300, it's spot on the money. Right. So it's like it's all about the intended distance that you're trying to shoot if you don't want to mess with any math, especially with irons and things. So bullets don't fly straight. In fact, as they're coming in, that entry trajectory is usually quite an extreme trajectory. So if we're looking at let's let's pretend that this is a piece of steel. All right. And it's just at a, at a you know, just straight, you know, face on angle. Right. Just like we're sitting here. Right. Face on. All right. And let's say that that projectile is coming in. Well, if the steel's looking like this, that projectile, depending on the distance you're shooting, could really be coming in at like this angle like this. So the actual impact is at a downward angle, especially at the extreme ranges, and especially if you're shooting something like a 308 or a 30 alt 6 uh, That's where people get into this term flat shooting right? It's not that the projectile doesn't arc just like any other projectile when you're shooting something like a six millimeter Creedmoor, or six five Creed or a six millimeter arc or something. It's just that that arc is much less pronounced. So you can actually, you have a, a not only less math and less come up to get out to longer range uh, because it is so flat shooting, right? You're not having to account for that extreme spread of distance that that projectile could hit within. If it's flatter shooting, you can get away 
with with a lot more. Okay, and it it, it requires less math and less dope on the optic to get the the projectile to go out to you know longer distances. Well, what makes something flat shooting? I mean, have you ever thought about that? Bullet design has a lot to do with it. All right, certain bore diameters just tend to lend themselves better for long range shooting. Of course, you know, the Swedes had this figured out a long time ago. Look at the M96 Swedish Mauser, 6.5x55, you know, a relatively long bullet with a long bearing surface, a good, good looking O jive on it, great bullet design, uh, a good shoulder angle, good case capacity, a good rifle they put it in. And, and guess what? A marksman that knows what he's doing can take an iron sighted Swedish M96 and engage targets at 800 yards without even thinking about it. But there's a combination of many things that go into that, right? Even our own military, right? We had the uh, six millimeter Lee Navy. Now that particular gun never caught on, unfortunately, but we early on had it relatively figured out with six millimeter Lee Navy. It just never quite got where it needed to go. Now what do we see in today's shooting world, right? People are getting away from 308s and more towards the 6.5 Creedmoor, 6mm Creedmoor. People are getting away from 5.56 and 300 Blackout, and they're getting more into the 6mm Arc or the 6mm AR, which was like the, the early Wildcat version that Chad did the video on uh, some time back. So, um, you know, having a flat shooting cartridge is great because it's a lot less math and a lot less come up. And quite frankly, those bullets also bunk the wind way better too. A long bullet with a good long bearing surface on it and the length of the projectile and that, that length to weight ratio, you, you figure out the ballistic coefficient of the projectile and they have better ballistic coefficients, better BCs, right? It's not like throwing a ballistic marshmallow. Like if you're shooting a 4570, a 4570 is going to have a lot more arc, okay, versus a 6.5 is going to be a little bit flatter shooting. And the projectiles are really fast as well. So it's just there's a lot of things to consider when it comes to long range shooting. And I wanted this video to be, you know, sort of a synopsis, a, a brief expose, if you will, um, about some of the things that go into it. And Chad and I will probably wind up doing an entire series on some of the, the finities of long range shooting. And, you know, there is a science to it. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of that, but to answer the question, no, bullets absolutely do not fly straight. Uh, when they come out of, the, out of the barrel, if you have a right-hand twist, all right, think, think about a football. All right, football player doesn't just swing his arm and the football just flies straight to the person. What does he do? You know, the quarterback's going to make the pass. He looks over. He angles up. He throws it up and angles it into whoever he's going to throw it to. Right, he's got to figure out, and somewhere in his head, he's doing some trigonometry or something. He's figuring out, all right, I've got to throw it this fast, this hard. I mean, it's just from all the practice, they know exactly how to get that ball to land right, whoever they want to throw it to. And that, and when there's, what do they also do when they throw a football? They put spin on it. That's what the laces on the ball are for, so they can put some spin on that ball and get it spinning. So when a projectile leaves the barrel of your rifle uh, on a right hand twist. The, the bullet is spinning to the right. Okay, so what's going to happen is, as it comes out of the barrel, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be spinning really, really fast, a lot faster than my fingers moving. It's going to be spinning, and it's going to go up out of the barrel, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to favor to the right because that's the direction of the twist. Now, there is such thing as a left-hand twist, in which case the projectile will be turning to the left. Now, those aren't common. Most of your uh, twists are going to be right-hand twists. So, yes, that projectile, as it's spinning really fast, it is kind of working its way to the right ever so slightly. And, of course, all of the calculations that we factor in uh, with our shooting, with our, especially when you're going real long range, you have to factor in that, that bit of spin, that, that right-hand spin drift, okay? So there's lots of little things like that you have to consider, especially once you start shooting some really insane ranges. So if this piqued your interest, and I hope it did, Stay tuned. Chad and I will make an entire episode about long range shooting. We'll talk about some of the gear. Uh, we'll talk, you know, about some of the complications. And we'll, we'll show you some ways that you can get by without having to, you know, you can do it the hard way and figure out the math. I mean, it helps have a chronograph. We'll get into all of that in a future video. But to answer the question, no, bullets do not fly straight. That's a common myth. And people, for some reason, just tend to keep spreading that information around. Oh, yeah, just like a laser beam. And, and, and look, a lot of old timers that don't understand. I mean, I, I get it, right? I've got family members that they just swear that, 
oh, well, don't miss your target because that projectile could just fly for miles and miles and miles in a perfectly straight line like a laser beam. No, that's not exactly the case. Now, you should always know what's beyond your target. That's one of the most basic rules of safety. I mean, don't assume that because the entry of your projectile is kind of going in a downward angle that you still shouldn't, you know, be careful and have a good backstop and everything like that. So the, the, the concern is warranted, but just not exactly in the way that a lot of folks have always said over the years about, you know, bullets flying past the target for miles and miles. And, and just, you know, if you shot a 30 6 on the moon, Sure, that projectile is going to fly pretty freaking straight for quite a while, right? Because different gravity gravity, and everything like that. Anyway, I digress. Um, have a great day. Thanks so much for tuning in. I wanted to answer this question. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon.